joined now by the executive director of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, my dear friend from Tucson, Arizona, Dr. Jane Orient. And Jane, you wrote an article recently entitled Perils in the Air. A frequent flyer physician reflects on flight MH370. In that article, you highlight the dangers of air travel and you also advise vigilance on the parts of patients. If you were to offer a diagnosis, a prognosis, some advice, Dr. Jane Orient, what do we need to keep in mind as air travelers to uh, keep our trips safer? Well, I think we need to, to be in a state of aw situational awareness, it's called. And don't just sit in the lounge uh, not paying attention and expecting that TSA is keeping us safe. That it's very important to know uh, who is on the airplane with us, who's going to be piloting the plane, which may have something to do with which airline you choose. And uh, if, if you see something suspicious, then then don't be afraid to, to do something about it, perhaps just by approaching a person and asking some polite questions. And then maybe you may, may make some judgments about the response that you get, whether it's a normal response or not, as to what, you, what your travel plans are going to be for that day. And that uh, harkens to the, the motto of uh, Homeland Security, if you see something, say something. But another question I have for you, Dr. Orion, is this. You know, we have this situation where it's still a mystery right now, and there are a lot of people who are anxious anyway when they fly. But, you know, if somebody is anxious, you know, or should they be more anxious because we don't know what happened here as opposed to knowing what caused uh, this plane to disappear? Well, I, I don't. I'm not going to feel any more anxious. I've got to get on an airplane again soon, and I don't think I feel any more upset about it. It's just one of those things you have to do. The air, air travel is really very safe these days, but it's important to understand that when you're in the air, you do need to pay attention to what they tell you about the safety briefing, for one thing. For example, one lesson from this flight is the speculation about whether they actually de depressurized the, ch the chamber um, while the pilots were on oxygen. And you know that when the airplane, the, the flight attendant says, well, if the oxygen masks appear, put yours on immediately. Don't try to assist somebody else. What they don't tell you because they don't want to scare you to death probably is you may have only uh, 15 to 20 seconds of useful consciousness so you better put that mask on or you won't be able to help yourself or anybody else. And, and Jane, physiologically, this is something, again, not to alarm people, but to help people understand. It is literally a matter of seconds in cabin depressurization. You're saying what, about 15 to 20 seconds? And that's why it's so imperative to get that mask on and get it secured and get the oxygen flowing. Yes, that's at 40,000 feet. It's 15 to 20 seconds. There are tables of, you know, the altitude of how much time you have, but it really isn't very much time. So if those masks appear, it means that something bad has happened. The atmosphere outside the airplane is not compatible with survival. So you really do need to take, take action quickly. And I, well, it, it, it prompts the other question, Jane, if you fail to, to get that mask secured with the depressurization, and you say you only have 15 to 20 seconds, what happens to you uh, physiologically in that time with the depressurization? Oh, you become unconscious, be unconscious because of lack of oxygen. So now, of course, I'm assuming that the depressurization happens fairly gradually. If it's if it's sudden, it's like bolting from from a deep deep sea dive, and then then you have maybe the bends or maybe your lungs explode and your eardrums rupture and and all of that. But that is it's unlikely for the cabin to depressurize really, really quickly unless the whole side of the airplane blows off. Hmm. Okay, so you know, th there was this theory now that the plane, the plane may have depressurized, and that was what caused the plane to make that sharp turn to the south uh, and then take this flight path. Um, now, going back to this issue of depressurization, how often does this happen in planes? Uh, and, you, you know, you mentioned the fact that these airlines don't want passengers to know that there's a limited amount of oxygen supply. Do you think they're going to be able to continue that, or more people are going to tune in and be aware of that now? Um, well, I don't know. I, I can say that I was on an airplane once that did have something go wrong with the pressurization system, and the pilot descended to about 10,000 feet fairly rapidly. 
um, and our ears were all popping, and we continued on to our destination because it wasn't that far away. But that, that was the reason for the descent, because at 10,000 feet, then, then the atmosphere had, atmospheric pressure is adequate for you to get enough oxygen from the air, and the uh, oxygen mass did not come down. But it was kind of a, a kind of a um, wake up call that yes, yes, we really are in the chamber up there, and we better make sure, we better hope that the pressure stays what it's supposed to be. And you mentioned the safety briefing. This is a good reminder now, especially because a lot of folks who travel a lot, we have the opportunity to use our phones and our iPads and listen to music now instead of listening to those safety briefings. You would say, Dr. Orient, that's a terrible, that's a terrible idea. You should go ahead and focus on those safety briefings, even if you travel a lot. Well, you sh yeah, unless you really know what they're saying and you, you know it by heart, but maybe it, it doesn't hurt to review it and to think about it because if you, if you, that's part of your situational awareness to think about what do I do if. Well, you mentioned situational awareness, Jane, and, and, and I think back to a couple of, of incidents. First of all, uh, the shoe bomber, Richard Reed, on that international flight from London, I believe, to Miami aboard American Airlines where passengers intervened as he tried to detonate an explosive in his shoe. And then uh, Christmas Day, I believe 2009, on the flight from Amsterdam to Detroit, where uh, you had, for lack of a better term, Captain Underpants uh, trying to, uh, trying to uh, likewise detonate an explosive. And again, one of the passengers stepped in the way to act. So we are seeing, at least based on those two incidents, in terms of air travel into this country, the kind of situational awareness that you advocate in your most recent article. Right, and no one can predict in advance what's going to happen, but if something as weird is going on, it's more important to think about the right thing to do than to, to be afraid of looking stupid if you, um, if you take some action. Well, Dr. Jane Orient, uh, uh, we appreciate your insights on this, of course, in your fight for free market medicine through the years. We'll have to have you back to talk about the scourge of Obamacare, but practical advice for someone who's a frequent flyer and a physician and good advice for the rest of us, Dr. Jane Orient, we very much appreciate your time here today on America's Forum. Thank you. Yeah, J.D., it's easy to kind of want to sink down in your seat and just forget about things or dip into your work, but a uh, good reminder from Dr. Orient there that we all have a role to play uh, when it comes to airport security. Even though we don't know this is a terrorist event yet, still a good reminder to be vigilant. And coming up, uh, we go from airplanes to motion pictures, NOAA and the Ark. And controversy with that motion picture, James Herson will join us next on America's Forum. Right after this, and of course, you can always weigh in here on America's Forum. Reach out to us on social media.